What's up Tangerinis? I'm Jordan and she's Maddie and we are Tangerine Travels. We are from Arizona, living in Mexico and our travels have taken us to Lima, Peru. So we are telling you today some of the things that we learned during our trip here, what not to do and mistakes that you could make when traveling in this city. The first thing you shouldn't do when coming to Lima is forget that the voltage is different. Your US outlets are probably gonna fit, your European ones are probably going to fit because they're kind of like a two-in-one here usually, but it is a different voltage. So if you wanna make sure you don't fry your electronics, go pick up a voltage converter before you come. The next mistake you're going to want to avoid is assuming that Pisco, a local drink, is the same alcohol content as wine because they're both made out of grapes. But Pisco is a distilled liquor and it is 40% alcohol. So you can find yourself in big trouble if you're sipping on it thinking it's like glasses of wine at 12 to 13% alcohol by volume. <laughs> Something they sell a lot of here in Lima, Peru is coca candies. It's made from the cocaine leaves and people often brew it into a tea. They use it for motion sickness. Cinco soles. Cinco soles? This cookie. This is coca natural. Okay. You can get yourself in kind of a lot of trouble by bringing it back to your home country. So the next thing not to do is buy that and maybe forget that it's in your bag or something because it's still considered in that same category as the drug itself, even though it's not actual cocaine. <laughs> this one might be obvious to many, but if you haven't done a lot of international travel, don't forget that there's a different currency here. It's called Sol or soles for plural, but pretty much everywhere accepts credit cards. So I think your best option here is to get a credit card that has no foreign transaction fees and use that everywhere to pay. We personally use an American Express travel credit card, which we've had no problem using here in Lima. It's been accepted pretty much everywhere except for one place, I think. So if you're looking for a credit, uh, travel credit card to use, we'll link that one down below. We've been enjoying it and all the benefits. The next thing is when you're traveling to a new country, it is so tempting to just stick to the food you know and like whatever, order hamburgers or chicken just mm -hmm. because you're unfamiliar with the language of the dishes. Uh -huh. But if I can have any recommendation, a mistake you would make is not ordering lots and lots of typical Peruvian food. I so think good. it is amazing and it's so different than anything I've ever tried. Even something like ceviche is so different here than what we have been eating a lot in Mexico. And there's so many typical dishes that are just, oh, crave worthy. Yeah, the cuisine in Lima is considered some of the best in the world, so huge mistake to not eat it. Mm -hmm. The next thing you should not do when coming to Lima is forget to talk to your cell phone provider because as with many foreign countries, Peru may not be covered under your current plan or you might have to add something to your plan to make sure you're covered once you get here. We figured when we got here that we would just buy a week's worth of cell phone coverage. Mm -hmm. And as it turns out, it was like $60, I think, per person. Yeah. 60 US dollars for just a few days. So we ultimately ended up going without and just relying on Wi-Fi and cafes and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I do think it is sometimes nice to have data in another country yeah, so that you don't end up like trapped or not able to get a Uber or something like that. And so just keep that in mind. And because we didn't have data, we at least downloaded Google Maps for Lima on our phone so we could access that whether Offline. or not we had data. Yeah. And speaking of Uber, I think a big mistake would be not using it while you're here just because it's a long drive. Because on our trip from, the longest trip we've taken an Uber was from the airport to Miraflores. It was about 45 minutes and it ended up being approximately 11 US dollars. And that ride from the airport, that was on UberX. It's even cheaper on Uber Pool. So Uber is the way to go in Lima. And we think an even bigger mistake, perhaps the biggest mistake you could make in Lima is renting a car instead of letting the professionals handle it because <laughs> We think driving in Mexico is pretty stressful and crazy at times. Here, it is like a whole different ball game. I'm sitting in the in the car. Anytime we've been in the Uber, just like white knuckling the handles. We get out and I'm like, oh wow, I was really tense in there because just people go and cut people off and there's honking everywhere. It is 
chaos. So don't rent a car. In our humble opinion, that would be a big mistake. <laughs> you might want to come to Lima in the summer because that's when the weather really clears up here. There's more sun. You can see a lot better. The sunsets are amazing. So don't go booking it in July because that's not summer here in Lima. It's the Southern Hemisphere. The seasons are switched. So if you want to come in the summer, be booking around December. However, if you think it would be a mistake to come during the high season when there's lots of tourists and lots more people, then the mistake would be coming in the winter slash summer, the flip-flop. The mistake would be coming in December or something when right now there's really not a whole lot of people around. During our trip here, it's been kind of nice to be some of the only ones in the tourist destinations and walking around. A mistake that we made during this trip was saving quite a few things till Sunday and we found out that on Sunday quite a bit is closed. Restaurants, shops, different things like that and that's likely due to the fact that 70 or 80 percent of the population is Catholic meaning Sunday is a day of rest. <laughs> Also on Sunday, lots of streets are closed due to the, what in Guadalajara was called Via Recreativa. I don't know what it's called here, but basically they close down streets for bicyclists, joggers, people walking their dog. So that's another thing you wanna watch out for whether you're taking an Uber or trying to get from point A to point B. The next mistake you shouldn't make is forget that the tipping culture here is probably different than what you're used to. If you look up the tipping culture in Peru, you might see that there really isn't one throughout much of the country, but that's different here in Lima. In Lima, it generally is expected to tip for various services and at restaurants. What should you tip? Well, if you're going to a fancy place, it seems like 15% is pretty standard here, whereas at a lower to mid-end restaurant, generally 10% is what you might tip for good service here. And whenever we've given them the card at the end of the meal and we're like, con 10% de propina, por favor, always their reaction is muchísimas gracias, muchas gracias, not just thank you. It's like, thank you very much, emphasize. So maybe locals don't tip that much or as frequently or something, but 10% mm -hmm. seems to be standard and okay. But as we've learned throughout our travels, tipping can kind of be a touchy, sensitive topic because uh -huh. people think about it so differently, especially from place to place, person to person. So mm -hmm. if that is not the case, if we got this wrong from our research and like experience. tipping is big experience, yeah, let us know in the comments. All right, next thing, and this would be a big, big mistake, and that's thinking that cars will stop for you when you're in a crosswalk, even if you have the right of way, you don't have the right of way here, it seems. The cars will not stop. You can make eye contact and wave and try to get their attention to where they give you like the hand signal, but don't assume they're going to stop. We have a few times and it's been scary. <laughs> <laughs> now, the official language in Lima or in Peru is Spanish and the second language is honking. <laughs> Next mistake you should avoid making is canceling your trip because you don't speak Spanish. Yes, Spanish is the first language here, but lots and lots of people speak English and we have run into so many foreigners here who we hear speaking English around us. So if you know English or Spanish, you're good to go. Or you might be thinking, well, what the heck, you guys? You said the Spanish was so different there from Mexico, so what if I only know Mexican Spanish or Spain Spanish? And what we notice is that it's pretty easy to understand people, assuming they're talking loud enough for you to hear them. And really, the differences are pretty much surrounding food names, like the dish names and food ingredients, but you really can get by if you know Spanish. Even basic Spanish, I think, would do the trick. Most people know Peru because of one of the seven wonders of the world, Machu Picchu, but a mistake that you can make is assuming that you're pretty close to Machu Picchu mm -hmm. when you're in Lima. It's not. Yeah. It's like a fly into Lima, take another plane, take a bus, take a train, walk a lot. It's not close. So that would be a big mistake if you're coming here thinking you could take an Uber there. <laughs> yeah, lots of people asked us if we were going to be going to Machu Picchu and we're only here for six days during this trip. So that's really, like that would be the whole trip. Uh -huh. The whole trip would be getting to Machu Picchu and back. Yeah, huge bucket list item of mine, but just not gonna happen in this short of a trip. And 
then perhaps the stupidest mistake that we made was forgetting that there might not be heating and cooling in our Airbnb. There was none and we had baggage weight limits. So one of the last things to go were my warm clothes for night, my yoga pants, sweatpants. It might not be the case for everywhere, but we're in a pretty nice Airbnb. We don't have air conditioning or heating. In fact, in like windows, there's a big hole just for all the air to come in to freeze us out all night. <laughs> so maybe they do that for the humidity or something, but I've seen those holes in the walls and windows and stuff in other places. So it seems like that might be a common thing here. So you might be thinking at this point, wow, you guys are such idiots. Like everyone knows this stuff, but whenever you're traveling, there are always going to be oversights, no matter how much planning you do and how much research and how many questions you ask. So we hope some of our oversights and some of these little things help you out in your future travels to Lima. To be clear, not all of these were oversights on our part. We knew there was a different currency. We yes. knew our cell phone plan wasn't going to work and things like that. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching this video today. Hope it helps you out. Subscribe to our channel to see more travel vlogs we are putting out. And one more thing. Gong that bell so you get notified the second we upload a new video and we will see you there. <laughs>